Hello everyone, welcome to another YouTube video slash podcast, depending on how you're consuming this content. I've got in the studio with me, Vikas. How's it? Hello, hello. Nice, nice to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, in today's episode, we're going to try and keep it short and sweet. We're trying to get better at, one, articulating ourselves, making sure we add as much value as possible, being cognizant that you have very little attention and a lot going on in your life. So with that said, we want to talk about how to increase foot traffic to restaurants. Vikas, where do we begin? Yeah, I think we've we've had a couple of uh, restaurant engagements, especially with franchises in the, in the last couple of weeks, and we've developed some interesting strategies for them. And I think, um, yeah, we can maybe just dive into, into how we've um, managed to put together some good strategies for them and uh, how that's going to increase food traffic for, for, those, for those brands. Also how it has increased food traffic for some of the brands that we've worked with, which we can't necessarily mention names on the podcast. But I think with that said, what is the some of the biggest mistakes we've seen that these people make? Maybe we can start there because as we're having these conversations, we're going, oh, wow, you're doing that? Is that really you know, worth spending more money on? Mm. And we realize that there's just gaps in their marketing strategy. I mean, maybe we can identify yeah. some of that. Yeah, so the first thing we've noticed is that a lot of restaurants have um, a gap in terms of when it comes to their organic strategy. So a lot of them are normally good at organic um, posts and stuff on their social pages. But the problem is not a lot of people see those posts. And uh, for them, it's it's an issue because that's not going to drive any traffic for, for that particular restaurant. So they're already spending a lot of money on driving or on posting stuff on their pages. But again, not many people are seeing that. So obviously we need to make a plan there. Yeah, and also we've seen that at the end of the day they all have really creative ideas so they all have the the back end sorted out in terms mm. of good creative deals and specials and uh, you know the restaurant owners are usually really good at coming up with offers and that's usually yeah. the one thing we need for a local business to succeed is what are people going to really receive in terms of value because to say hey listen you're going to get this burger at this price and if someone else sells it at the same price then you know, the only thing that can distinguish you from someone else's taste, but they're going to have to taste mm. that burger before they're going to have to compare it with something else. So there has to be some form of incentive for someone to come in. Yeah, and sure. we see restaurants are really good at the traditional marketing side of it. So they'll have their billboards, they'll have, uh, you know, their traditional, uh, I mean, other stuff that they do, which would be, uh, what would billboards, what else do they do, TV ads? Yeah. Things, things like TV ads and radio ads and whatnot, and all of them usually include some form of offer. So a yeah. lot of them use traditional media to drive traffic, and they don't really understand how to utilize social media or any digital strategies to ensure that that traffic actually equals bums in seats. Yeah. And I think that's what we can talk about a little bit about today. The first thing I can say from my perspective is that obviously you're going to have to allocate some budget towards those creatives, those uh, content that you've created as a restaurant because they invest time, effort and money for people mm. to come in, take photo shoots, take video behind the scenes stuff. Obviously, customers love to see that. Yeah. But like you said, they post it organically and don't really utilize all that content to the best of its potential. So when you start to allocate some advertising brands and dollars to the content that they've been created, uh, what do you suggest they do? Because most of them boost posts. And yeah, that's yeah. one of the gaps that we've identified they're doing wrong is the boosted post in itself is not really going to translate into more people coming in necessarily. Yes, more people will see what you have to say as, as a business, but it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to act. So how would you go about doing that differently? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of boxes that we need to check as soon as um, if you are running ads and if, if a brand runs ads, you need, you need to obviously collect leads and you need to build a database you can market to in the future. So I think that's box number one is just making sure that we can run some form of competition or some form of attractive um, offer for people to actually sign up to an email list or to or we get their numbers and stuff like that because then we can later on send out email blasts if we have a new deal coming out or we can send text message blasts if we feel like we need more bums in seats in essence. Um, so that's that's the first thing that we need to look at is getting a strategy that generates leads for the business. Then, Yeah, I just want to add on top of that is that most people just focus on the front end in terms of putting the content on social media and creating the offers and so forth. But very seldom do we focus on trying to bring people back. And the best way to do that is through email and SMS. So by collecting that form, that type of data, you are strengthening your arsenal 
that will allow you to now more effectively communicate with people who've already been in your restaurant. So if they had a good experience, there's a high likelihood if they see the right message that they're going to come back. Mm. And I think restaurants underestimate you know what lifetime value actually means because we so fixated on getting more people to experience us but we seldom focus on bringing the people who actually enjoyed the food and had a good experience back mm. and we just assume that that's something that's naturally going to happen yeah in fact i can tell you now most restaurant owners are a little bit ignorant or naive to understanding what percentage of people actually come back because we just romantically assume we have the best food and we have the mm. best experience. So therefore, if we get people to come in, that they're going to come back naturally. But that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. Look, I think w how we've structured um, some of our, our marketing strategies for restaurants was we, we took the, an organic approach and we planned things out on a week-to-week -week basis. And we, we try to hit from an organic side um, on, on, on your social. So that's the post you post on your pages. We try to hit every single sector of um, what their business is about and the offers and specials they have for that week or currently the promotion they're running for the month. So, but for example, on a Monday, we'd, we'd, po we'd pretty much make a post of the week specials. On a Tuesday, we'd promote, start promoting a special event that's happening this weekend um, or, or post that on the pages. And then we'd go into the back end of the ads manager, we'd run those posts as ads. So everybody who goes to your page will still see all of the engagement the ads are actually getting. And um, I think just structuring a paid strategy around your organic is kind of like the way to go since mm -hmm. it is such a broad kind of like industry. So yeah, that, that would be that would be the way that I would start with by structuring um, yeah. a strategy for that. And by looking at the paid ad side of things, like running lead form ads can work also extremely well, getting people to leave the email and contact numbers so that mm. you can build up that database of people who might be interested in trying your food out for the first time or coming back. So in what I'm hearing you say is, uh, one, most have a really good organic strategy in terms of content. They do mm. post on their pages really uh, often enough i want to say religiously but that's yeah. not necessarily the case but often enough but then where they fall short is really allocating spend behind that content they think that boosting the posts in that area is enough which is really not an ads manager can help you squeeze out more value out of the money that you set aside for marketing number one yeah also looking at running uh, lead form ads to collect emails and contact numbers because yeah. we underestimate how powerful that can be in order to bring people back or even get them to try the restaurant for the very first time because if someone signs up to be the first to know about deals and specials yeah. you can start a welcome series of emails of saying hey this is who we are this is who uh, what, what we uh, specialize in i founded this company with my dad he was originally italian and this is all his his inspired recipes what a what a what a you can start to tell a bit of a story that's going to get people more emotionally invested in, in that restaurant if it's a franchise same thing like this is w what we stand for this is what makes us unique this is what we want you to experience if you come through and you can start to build some form of credibility and trust with that user on the other side and also just stay top of mind um, and you do that through email and sms and we've seen whatsapp also work really well you know for that and i think a lot of restaurants we've actually had that conversation earlier today a lot of businesses don't know how to integrate whatsapp marketing into their business yeah it's a very complicated process um and it can get quite expensive if you don't have the right tools so there are simpler more effective ways to do that so immediately collecting email contact number you can send someone an email a whatsapp and an sms so three forms of communication now outside of the organic outside of the paid ads um, that can add value to the restaurant and get people to come in. Another tactic which we've seen work really well is most restaurants have Wi-Fi. Mm. And what they do is, the mistake I've seen people make is that they give the Wi-Fi away for free. Not The mistake is not the free Wi-Fi, but it's not giving people free up. in exchange for something else. Yeah, People give it away for free saying, hey, just click here and you can get access to our Wi-Fi or they ask the waiter for the password. But there's so much value behind giving that Wi-Fi for free mm. uh, for you as a business owner giving that away because you can ask someone's email and contact number and say, hey, leave these details, fill in these questions uh, and then we, you can get access to our Wi-Fi. Now, mm. that is a great way to collect more information and data. The Again, the, one of the mistakes that we've seen people make is that they allow people to put in fake email addresses and contact numbers just to get the Wi-Fi. So a little small little tactic that I've seen work well is to ask someone to leave their email and contact number, but then 
before you give them access to the Wi-Fi, say, listen, we've sent you a confirmation link to your email. Please yeah. go and verify that email. Then you're going to start getting access to, to our internet. Because yeah. now you're going to avoid getting fake emails and contact numbers. And therefore, you're starting to build up a database of people um, in your area who yeah. has been there before who you can contact. Yeah. So Another thing we have also done from a paid ad side is we've been experimenting a lot with video funnels and uh, using using a normal awareness ad of how your restaurant looks inside people enjoying food just your chef cooking stuff like normal cool engaging videos mm -hmm. that you run as a paid ad in your area and then based on people certain uh, percentage of people who watch a certain percentage of that video you can then retarget them with offers and different things as well um so that's also a great strategy because you know that they are interested in your brand. Yeah, so retargeting people who've been on the site, that's mm. another, that's part of that strategy. Mm. Uh, you can have a pixel on your site. Many restaurant owners have websites, but they don't have the pixel and mm. you leverage it accordingly in order to retarget people who've been on the site before. But what you're saying is you can take it, you know, a level further and do something as cool as video funnels where you yeah. show someone a video and then retarget someone who's watched that video with another video. Yeah. And so you can start to tell a bit of a story. Uh, you can give them better ideas of what promotional offers you have throughout the month. Uh, or you can now also use that data to show mm. them the live band that's going to be playing on Saturday for a vibe if they want to come through or, uh, you know, a competition that you might be having. Yeah. So just leveraging the digital marketing tool that's available uh, to its best potential is really the gap that we've identified when it comes to restaurants. Uh, a lot of them understand, hey, we need to create content, we need to be posting, but many, I would say, business owners in the food and, and restaurant and even hospitality space neglect, I wanna say, are not really squeezing all the juice out of uh, you know the digital yeah. tools available. Um, they, they neglect the fact that you need to get eyeballs on whatever you produce because I, I know a lot of restaurants that I've spoken to on, on meetings and stuff that um, spend endless amount of money on just producing very good content and it all looks very good. The branding looks good. Everything, it checks every single box except they're not reaching people. Mm -hmm. And I think just by fixing that already is going to make a big, big, yeah. big difference. And then on the flip side of reaching people is getting them excited and getting them to actually come in. And that's where a bit of direct response marketing yeah. comes in through the right wording, through the right kind of urgency and, and fear of missing out tactics and stuff like that. And you can do that in a way that it's not spammy because when yeah. you talk about these things, a lot of people go, oh, you know, we don't want to, we want to stay away from direct response because it's a bit spammy and not in line with our brand. But the reality is forget all the, crappy type of marketing tactics that you see online that falls under direct response. There are right ways to do it and professional ways to do it that can actually impact your business directly. So I think that was a mouthful. We, yeah, we had a pretty good episode. A lot of restaurants don't have to put in a lot of effort to get a lot more bums in seats by just leveraging what they already have. 100%. They have all the assets. It's just about leveraging it best you can. Hmm. Um, I mean, we, we didn't even chat about Google Ads, but that's another opportunity uh, that people have to pop up if someone searches restaurants or near me or burger near me yeah. or pizza near me. Uh, you can call and collect, yeah. uh, stuff like that, which works really well, which we've seen depending on obviously the logistical back end of, of your business, if you can do that kind of stuff. But that's all the time that we have for there. I, I hope that there was some value in it for you guys. And if there was, I want to encourage you to like and subscribe for more content like this. Vix, thanks for joining us, man. Cool. Cheers.